Hello everyone, welcome to DMP Beyond Borders, a unique podcast where boundaries expand and people come closer. I am Gagan and I'll be your host for the day. And I'm Alberto Ramos and I'll be host for the day. And without any delay, let's start with our not so early early talk show. And we have two amazing guests who are international students of our very own Confederation College. We have Gurtej from India and Sanjana from Bangladesh, right? Yep, hello. And Hello. And I don't want to mess your intro, so let's let uh, give you the opportunity. Gurtej, tell us about yourself. Uh, my name is Gurtej Singh. I'm doing a developmental service worker course here. Uh-huh. It's a two-year course. Uh, we just help people to like get independent who have disabilities mm-hmm. and give them opportunity to live in that's like day-to-day life. That's nice. And Sanjana, what about you? Um, I'm... I'm done being a student, actually. I graduated in 2017. Uh-huh. Um, I went to school in, in Guelph, which mm-hmm. is uh, almost 17 hours south of Thunder Bay. Mm-hmm. I went for environmental sciences. I mm-hmm. did my undergrad, and then I moved up here uh, with a job. I work with a nonprofit called Roots to Harvest okay, right now. That's, that's great. Uh, so let's start with the first thing that is affected, you know, when we migrate to a new country. Your routine, how it's affected. Sanjana, let's start with you. Well, I mean, unlike you, I started off in a milder climate, I would uh-huh. say. I started off in southern Ontario. Mm-hmm. It was still very, very different. The climate is super different. In Bangladesh, the lowest it ever gets is about 7 degrees, mm-hmm. I would say. So I remember when I was on the plane coming here in September, um, they announced the temperature outside was 15 degrees, and I was I was shocked. I was like, this is insane, 15 <laughs> degrees, I'm going to freeze. And <laughs> now it's like minus 21 outside, I have adjusted. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's definitely a big change. The place where I come from, 16 or 15 is our winter. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like people here are, it's, it's still summer. And Gurte is like, what about you? It's a totally different situation, man. Back mm-hmm. home, it's like, six, like the summers here uh-huh. is winters back home. So it's... <laughs> Not enough heat for uh, me. I can relate to that. <laughs> I come from India too. <laughs> yeah. And like, let's talk about your goals. Uh, has it changed? Like, whatever you were doing in India. Yeah, I was uh, back home. I was doing engineering. Mm-hmm. I'm back from home. I'm an engineer, and I just totally changed my field mm-hmm. because I wanted to experience some like new stuff. And I think that was like kind of interesting to help people so I just went into that field so like do you enjoy this now yeah really I much enjoy it. I have we have placements mm-hmm. first placements was in school so we were like spoiling children and yeah the, the next placement is gonna be in communities so we're gonna support people or elderly people basically mm-hmm. with disabilities mm-hmm. so it's really fun like you see people grow and uh, get independent so it's like really good and Sanjana, what about you? Like, um, well, I went to school for environmental sciences, <coughs> and my job right now is it's in a completely different sector. It's in mm-hmm. community development. Um, it does have a little bit of an environmental aspect to it. We work with people through growing food. So there's, mm-hmm. there's the agriculture aspect and sustainability aspect that comes into it. But the bigger picture is, for me, it has changed quite a bit. I went from being uh, wanting to be a researcher, wanting to be in academia, to working with people hands-on at the ground level. Mm-hmm. And it's it's definitely super different, but it's also very rewarding to be able to work with people and, as you said, see them grow. Yeah. Um, I feel like that has been an amazing experience, and mm-hmm. this is my field now. So, like, is it is it related to your, your guys' passion, or, like, is it something you do for a professional... Um, I would say it started off as a, in a professional capacity, mm-hmm. um, but even when I was a kid, my, my father, um, he makes documentary films related to agricultural development in developing countries. Mm-hmm. Um, that kind of fed into my idea of going into environmental sciences, and I've always seen him working with people, working with nonprofits. So n- somehow I ended up here, and it all kind of like links back to like all of my experiences from the mm-hmm. past. Mm-hmm. So like you said, your father is a videographer? Yeah, he's a documentary filmmaker. That's, that's exciting. It's really cool. I get to translate all of his scripts from Bengali to English, and I mm-hmm. get to learn a lot about the work that's happening yeah. in the developing world. So like, do you, do you have that uh, artistic touch to you? I, I honestly, I would say no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm as creative. Uh-huh. I'm more of a like inquisitive mind. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm, I'm more into the sciences. I know Kurtej personally. He is yeah. an artistic guy. <laughs> like he, he's actually helped me in my assignments. Oh, yeah? It's like I, I go blank with some of the, you know, video shots. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how can I do it? And he comes from beside, do it from this side. I'm like, oh. Gotta okay. be multi-talented, I guess, man. Like, I'm like, yeah. uh, I, I, I was feeling, I was the artistic one. Like, yeah. He's it's, nice, it's nice, though, to have, like, somebody to collab with. Yep, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's always <coughs> great to have 
that kind of energy the similar mm-hmm. energy that you know that oh, yeah. you are interested in like you know it's 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 hard when you migrate to a new country mm-hmm. and you yeah. are trying to fit in in the system mm-hmm. and i should say i thank gurtej for making me settle here mm-hmm. like yeah like although it was it was something like you know uh he he, he was so pumped up for me oh, yeah? to be here he was like come to Did come to canada he, so he, uh, was he, he was here before. like yeah. two okay. years before oh, me wow. yeah wow. and so he was like come to canada and we'll have some fun and all that <laughs> I'll, i'll help you settle up <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> i'm like okay yeah that's how yeah. that's that sounds like a It's plan it's definitely nice to have somebody already here when yeah. you're coming in yeah. i got picked up my uncle by my uncle from the airport and mm-hmm. it was just a really smooth transition because somebody was already here showing me the ropes it basically helps yeah it, it does help like yeah uh yeah so like coming to the education part mm-hmm. mm, do you guys like what is the comparison if you guys have to do a comparison of like i'm not i'm not saying mm-hmm. to point out the positive or negatives yeah. no i'm just uh let's talk about the positive part only mm-hmm. like how it's like is it Uh, I would say like the back home it's m- more theor- theoretical based like mm-hmm. you're not hands on mm-hmm. and um it's totally different because you study the whole semester and there's like just like one test and then you're finished and here we have like assignments we learn then we have placements so mm-hmm. we have like hands on experience and then we have books and everything is like totally different in a good way so it's so like basically we are a professional product yeah. before we leave yeah So sure. for you Sanjana how's that Um I don't really have a lot of background to compare because I came here right after high school mm-hmm. I never attended university or college back home Um so I don't really have like that kind of material to compare it to mm-hmm. but one of the reasons I wanted to come here was because as you said there's more hands on there's more access to resources um just even in the general term there's the universities have more money so the facilities are better the labs would have like high tech equipments that i would mm-hmm. be able to use for my research and that was i was that's what i was going into uh, when i came to canada and also have access to like world class libraries journals articles have professors who have um, amazing credentials all of that fed into my plan of coming here uh, let's talk about the tasty stuff <laughs> what, what what are your thoughts on food the food is here is amazing man i've tried i think every restaurant in town nah, i don't <laughs> know you you I'm have <laughs> so And i like the poutine man i uh-huh. like it uh-huh more canadian now so like i know you have some favorites from your country you must have been having some favorites here too yeah like uh, my favorite place to be is la poutine mm-hmm. yeah and back home <laughs> street food. <laughs> <laughs> Always street food. Man. Nothing beats the street food back no, home. Yeah, nothing, nothing, yeah. nothing, nothing. Nothing. That part of the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like what is your best place to eat? Um it it really <laughs> does vary uh depending on where I am. Um some I work I uh, my part-time job is at Prime Gelato, so when mm-hmm. I'm there, I go okay. to Indian Bistro a lot and I also go to Barbecue Cupid. Um but if I had to pick any place in Thunder Bay, I probably would go for Tandoor. And mm-hmm. there's there's a thing that I always love talking about Tandoor. They're I think they're they're pack the own it's owned by a Pakistani owner and the food is a little bit different from Mansoor or Masala Grill because there is a subtle difference in spices between India and Pakistan. Yeah. And I feel like the Pakistani taste is a bit more closer to Bangladeshi taste. Mm-hmm. Um and I I kind of like their food a lot more. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> and uh, like as Christmas and New Year is approaching, right? Yep. Any special plans? Like are you going back? To no, man. No. <laughs> no. Just uh, staying here working and uh, probably spending time with friends mm-hmm. if you're free but not like big plans. And no. what about you Sanjana? Um I'm planning a trip to Toronto because oh. I am from like the Guelph Toronto area all of mm-hmm. my friends are over there. Mm-hmm. Um this is a good chance like I have a two week chunk off and mm-hmm. I'll be able to go back and see them. That's um nice. so it's almost like going back home for me but not really. <laughs> so like do you what should I ask? It's it's really tough being in. Uh, so like if I ask you the basic question of what attracted you to Thunder Bay? Like mm-hmm. was it the oh, wow. It's the stories <laughs> and go to Canada and like have some fun and all that or like did you have some like tough like I <coughs> would say I had plans to study because mm-hmm. I wanted to like mm-hmm. explore the aspect of my life where I don't want to be in India for the rest of my life I want mm-hmm. to like explore so this year is Canada next year is going to be Australia and New Zealand man so that's 
interesting. That's exciting. Do you actually have plans to go visit New Zealand? Australia? Yeah, like my brother lives in Australia, okay. so it's next year is going to be Australia. Yeah. That must be super nice. Do you finish your program? Yeah. I'm asking uh, a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> That's nice. It's all right. Uh, it, yeah, it, it, this is my my job. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm doing yeah, your is, job. This is my last semester, so after okay. that, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. after graduating, it's nice to yeah, have a out. yeah, and it's nice to like explore when you're young. After yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> You don't have the chance. Like, after I know. I don't have the chance. <laughs> no. I can't. I can't take off for a year. <laughs> no, it's not feasible. Yeah. No. So, like, did you did you come here for? Um, I well, I mean, I went to Guelph initially. That was my plan, and I wanted to settle in the GTA area. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I graduated, and as you know, international students after they graduate, they get three years, mm-hmm. um, within which they have to get a one year of experience in order yeah. to be able to stay in Canada permanently. Um, and I needed to find a job. Um, which which fell into the category that would let me stay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been applying all over Canada. I applied to BC, I applied to Newfoundland. Like I was applying all over Canada. And then when I got this offer, it worked really well into what I wanted to do and what kind of work I my past um, brought into it. Because when I was in university, I worked with kids quite a bit. I worked in teaching. I worked, um, I worked with camps, mm-hmm. kind of supervising youth. Um, that fed into this job as well. So my educational background and experiential background connected really well. Um, so I decided to move here. I had three weeks to pretty much um, pack up everything and just mm-hmm. like move town. Yeah. Um, it was incredible and it was scary to be here at the beginning. And everybody told me stories about how cold it gets over here. My brother lives in Winnipeg and he's told me how difficult it is up north. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, people are doing it and I already knew that people, like I knew people in Thunder Bay already. So it was really nice um, coming up here and then finding this Bengali community and mm-hmm. kind of just like settling in and finding an amazing workplace and settling in there as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been a good transition so far. That's that's the best part of, you know, moving to a foreign country. Mm-hmm. You like I've been here, I have done baking, cooking and all that. Like you yeah. go through different jobs. Oh yeah. yeah. And it makes you Yeah, you it's know? make you independent, like more mm-hmm. independent rather than mm-hmm. just like Yeah, you do like things you'd never do at home. Yeah. yeah. How do you yeah. like the snow? I mean, <laughs> it's nice at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you build snowmen and stuff, and then it gets terrible. Yeah. And then yeah. it's really yeah. Then your hair starts getting like icicles on it. My eyelashes had icicles yesterday yeah. when I walked to work from yeah. home. <laughs> Every time I post something on Facebook and say it's it's hot, no, oh, it's it's cold, mm-hmm. and like people are like, oh, wait, wait, like, wait, the best the part is yet. Winters are coming. Yeah. Like, is, is it your first winter here? Uh, yup. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> like well, I, brace yourself. I enjoyed a bit of summer and autumn. Yeah. it was beautiful. Yeah, and I'm still trying to be positive about winters. Mm-hmm. But yeah, let's see. As long as you bundle up, you'll be fine. It's it's not as bad as people Snow angels, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you get rid of it. Maybe not right away. <laughs> 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 that's that's not on my list. <laughs> I don't want to do that. But Christmas season is really nice. Every it's it's festive, right? You go to the mall. <laughs> every there's like twinkly yeah. lights. There's the Really nice smells. Yeah. It's just and when you're an international student, it's go pretty fast because the it's semester a new is too busy. Though. Oh, true. I forgot about exams. Yeah. You guys have exams. Your exams and everything, <laughs> and you're packed with every like every day. It's like coming to the school and test uh, everything. Well, keeping the hard part like exam on the side, it's it's a new experience though for like for me mm-hmm. coming to like it is like Christmas is celebrated mm-hmm. from where I come, but not on this scale yeah. that the. Yeah whole you know the whole city is decorated yeah, like yeah. You, you feel the jingle bells yeah and when when it was halloween mm-hmm. the whole street like i was standing on the red river street uh, mm-hmm. just in front of scotia bank oh yeah and it was like the whole street was filled with people dressed up yeah, oh, yeah they so have nice. halloween parties and yeah. everything yeah, it's pretty awesome nice experience. yeah it's like which is your favorite festival to celebrate in thunder bay um, I would say Christmas. Christmas has always been my favorite. Mm-hmm. I know it's cold and it's hard, but after I come home, like bundling up with a blanket and hot chocolate and a book and the Christmas tree and Christmas and like, you know, those fairy lights, it's it's just blissful. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty and nice. what about you? I don't know, man. <laughs> 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 I've been so much busy with life, but like not much too. I would say Christmas too, because... I mostly celebrate Christmas with my, like, I work at Brain Injury Services. So mm-hmm. I support people, so they celebrate Christmas. So I c- mostly celebrate, like, most of the occasions like, so with them. So basically you celebrate every festival in the yeah. purest form, right? Yeah, every, okay. yeah, Halloween, everything, Thanksgiving that's, with that's them. Nice. So it's pretty that's nice. nice. Uh, so in one word, if you describe this podcast, it was my first job. 
How will you do it? I would say it was perfect. It was I'd say it was fun. Yeah, it was yeah. Really nice. Thank nice. you guys yeah, for, for being us. here yeah, for your for time. Us. And I really appreciate it. And yeah, it was an awesome talk though. Yeah. yeah, it's nice to get to meet you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you. And now it's time for a break. And we'll see you after the break, after the session. Thank you for being here. Stay tuned. Dum. Yay. Nice job. <laughs> And we are back with this exciting talk show. <laughs> Welcome to DMP Beyond Borders. And now we have for the second session, we have the Suki president. His name is Vignesh Vishwanathan. And we can, if uh, he gives us the permission, we can call him Vig, if it's right. That's right. Yeah, thank you. So how are you doing? <coughs> I'm good. How are you today? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. So Vignesh, you are also an international student, right? Yes, I am. And like today's discussion is about the international students' life and all that. So how long have you been in Thunder Bay? Uh, I came here fall 2016 mm -hmm. uh, for a dental assisting program and leadership for healthcare professionals mm -hmm. program. So mm -hmm. I would say almost three and a half years. So like how is the experience? It's been wonderful. I've never regretted it, the decision to come to Thunder Bay or CONFET. Mm -hmm. um, and the opportunities that I've been able to gain over here at the college has been amazing. Mm -hmm. You know the system very well, right? So if I ask you, as like I'm also an international student, right? So what are the benefits for any international students that is coming to, you know, this college? As in like place or the college as like well? Like to the college specifically? Um, it makes a lot of difference because um, over here, because the community is small, mm -hmm. um, there is more personable uh, approach to all the classes as well. You have the liberty to have a casual conversation with your professors or faculty mm -hmm. uh, when compared to other big colleges where you're just like, I don't want to say lost in the crowd, but you just feel lost uh, in the whole crowd and you just feel like, okay, you become more comfortable with uh, the own old uh, city mm -hmm. um, and then you get more adapted but here you have the opportunity to adapt yourself which I'm saying as a positive because mm -hmm. uh, you have to kind of like talk with um, other students uh, get to know them um, and like you cannot be missed in a street without knowing someone else too right yeah I, r I really appreciate the events you do you know like the scale it is done on I really I really love it Thank you. Uh, when it comes to the events, right? Well, are you planning to do something for the international cultures too? Um, we kind of like uh, include all international cultures. So uh, we do have like multicultural week that we happen to have in the month of March, okay. uh, where we kind of recognize um, different cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a whole week. Um, when we say cultures, uh, international cultures, and it also includes indigenous cultures and domestic cultures as well, mm -hmm. uh, because we have to be equal to uh, everyone. So we kind of like um, have a whole week where we invite students to participate, like um, do shows or like performances from their own culture. We mm -hmm. have like uh, invite students to have a booth set up yeah. uh, representing their country, mm -hmm. uh, which has been pretty good. And we also have like uh, free fruit food that kind of like represents that different countries as well. <laughs> <laughs> free food. Uh, okay. So when it comes to challenges, right, every system has a and is it is it like do you have a different approach to when it comes to the international students or and when it comes to domestic s students uh challenges with regards to adapting like sort of yeah we can we can take that as an example like adapting like is it uh, now an issue um i mean any any city as a matter of fact if you're going there for the first time it's going to be uh challenging to mm -hmm. understand the environment understand yeah. the people understand the culture uh, and getting along with uh, what the routine practices are um so like now we do see a lot of students who are coming off from high school who doesn't have the experience uh, to have worked with um, different kind of people so it's a, it'll be a little bit challenging for them just to be uh, a total different environment mm -hmm. um so that's what we call this culture shock right so yeah but it's been i think many of them are adapting good and but like i feel now the population uh, of international students is pretty good so like a person doesn't really feel like the time when you came yeah i don't think so it was that much right no not not this many no mm -hmm. so like uh, how's the behavior changed in international students now and the time you came 
No, everyone's ad- has been adapting good as I've seen, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, it's wonderful to see the increase in the international student population. Yeah. And as the student population increases, it uh, brings more, um, like, opportunities for them to um, have, like, opportunities for them to go to places around. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, like, they feel like Thunder Bay is their own home as well. Yeah. Uh, after graduation, they want to stay here. And it also gives them an opportunity to connect with other people. Mm-hmm. Like, earlier when I came in, I didn't know anyone coming in. Um, but now, at least, I know, like, each and everyone has a friend over here who yeah. they can connect to and then, like, get settled in. Quicker. Like, I have worked at places, and they were not from the part where I was but they were Gujarati and they were really nice and it's it's it really like gets you easily into that comfort zone of you know adapting a new workplace or any like the education stuff mm-hmm. like that is not the primary concern then to adapt it yeah. so uh, were you here like straight from India to Thunder Bay or like any other country no I, I came from straight from India to Thunder Bay okay so like what were your plans uh, was it straight like migrating or was it a specific goal? Um, I'm a dentist by profession back from hometown. Mm, so cool. I just wanted to improve my skills or mm-hmm. kind of like uh, improve my knowledge on how the dental or health um, mm-hmm. is in Canada. That's and great. I had to take a decision uh, where I had like multiple options, like whether going to the States or mm-hmm. uh, coming to Canada or any other country. I just chose Canada because um, it is an uh, immigration country. So you kind of like uh, have the opportunity to experience different cultures. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason why I chose Thunder Bay and Confed was because of the course that mm-hmm. I was coming into, the dental assisting I had good reviews for the college. So like from being to being a doctor to presidency, like how did that thing come up? I want to say that it was a uh, good change. Mm -hmm. Um, Like my plans coming in was totally different. Okay, I have to take up my licensing exams. I have to um, go to start my own clinic and Mm -hmm. all those kind of things. But the minute that I landed in Thunder Bay, I had the wonderful opportunity to meet with uh, members of Suki. And then I was just like, asked to join work Mm -hmm. and (laughs) from then uh, it just gave me a different opportunity like uh, to connect with students bond with students and thing like one thing led to another and I understood Mm -hmm. the importance of leadership student leadership Um, and I would want to say that I'm grateful to the students um, first um, uh, to the for them to have believed in me to run for the position and Fortunately, I got elected as the first international student president. Mm. Uh, well, I must say, you are doing a great job, though. And <clears throat> when it comes to, like, which is your favorite event to prepare for? Every event is an uh, important event for us because um, every time we have, like, unique uh, perspectives that we have to give and each and every day we are dealing with new set of students it doesn't necessarily mean that we have the same uh, set of students coming to every event so mm-hmm. every event is fun uh, while planning for that uh, even though it might seem like a small event like a tuny thursday or a healthy breakfast it's mm-hmm. just uh, gives me the opportunity to connect with different students every day so like you know the positive and the negative parts too right that's the great part. Like, you know which is the solution yep. for... That's good, that's good. And when it comes to, like, there are different arts and all that on the walls, right? Mm-hmm. You, like, is it, a, is it a duty or do you enjoy, like, decorating the whole place? Like, is it more of... Now, I know, like, I can feel you enjoy it, but then to, like, is it been some situations where you are, like... Okay. <laughs> um, the arts in the Suki office, or like, uh, basically decorating the whole part. Like you, it's a it's a sort of a composition, right? The, the festivals are coming up and decorate it. Oh, uh, in decor for events, like mm-hmm. that's been done by our staff uh, mm-hmm. because. Uh, one part is having the event, the other part is attracting students or any population to see what's happening, and that can be brought about only by decorations and having colors mm-hmm. as a part of the event, right? Like that's that's the best part of any event, right? They bring up the cultures and all that. Yeah. So true. like, uh, when it comes to like talking of art, which is your, I should say, which is your f- uh, favorite art form, I should say, like sort of, because like it's. Uh, 
the competition is full of arts, right? We have the art museum and all that, mm -hmm. and every wall has some artifact and all, right? Which is your like? Are you an artistic person? No, no, <laughs> no, there. No, I got a C in art class. <laughs> so yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's fine. I won't judge on that. Uh, which is your favorite part of being a president? Just gives me a wonderful experience mm -hmm. um, and the opportunity to um, represent on behalf of the students. Mm -hmm. And it gives me the opportunity to connect with different student populations and mm -hmm. understand their culture, understand where they come from, understand the situations. And uh, I'm able to kind of like put myself in their situation and able to represent them in the places that I work for. Mm -hmm. And about job opportunities, like has it changed? Is it like is it getting better or worse? It is getting better. Mm -hmm. um, like the the employees are uh, starting to understand the change in demographics, and mm -hmm. then like they are looking into hiring more um, international students or newcomers into uh, the college as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, any place, as a matter of fact, there is going to be challenges. Yeah. Um, and but I I do think that the students are understanding that like working just in Walmart or Canadian Superstore is just not a thing. They have yeah. the opportunity to go to other places as well, like smaller businesses and helping yeah. them uh, grow. So that's been good. So like, uh, <clears throat> I was having this question in my mind. Yeah, it, it's, my, it's my personal interest. What is the full form of Suki? <laughs> it's Student Union of Confederation College Incorporated. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if I and, was and thank you for saying it as Suki because we have uh, heard people say it as Sushi, uh, Suki. <laughs> so yeah, so <laughs> suki. Example, suki. Like, I've told him that uh, don't say Sushi, don't say Sushi, say Suki, say Suki. <laughs> yeah. Alberto, <coughs> do you have a question? I don't have actually. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so let's talk about. Do you do you listen to radio? <coughs> Do I listen to radio? Like which, yes. which is your favorite medium of uh, media, I should say? Like, is it Netflix, YouTube, television, or radio? Uh, television, like, as in, like, in general, I, I listen to music a lot. Mm -hmm. While driving, I like to drive mm -hmm. and I listen to music a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Morning radio shows, just to make sure that I keep myself um, updated on what's happening around. And most of the time, it's usually... I don't say television, like mostly laptops and televisions, yeah. So, like, is, is there any favorite serial or something? No, I like to kind of, like, binge watch. Binge watch isn't a word, like, uh, but I like to watch what I like at that particular moment. Mm. I just remember something and I and just, like, search for mood? that or depends on the mood, yeah. Mm, that's nice, that's nice. Yeah, that, that was a great... <laughs> talk like i know I'm, I'm, t I'm not really sure about my job but yeah it was it was awesome no, from was your amazing. side and uh, thank you for your time like i know you are a busy guy no. and thank you for your time i really appreciate it thank you for thank being you so here. much for the opportunity thank you appreciate so much. It too. and have a good one you too yeah thank you thank you thank you and yeah that's uh, that's a wrap up for our session two and i'll be i'll be with you in the session three stay tuned guys thank you And we are back with our awesome talk show that is going great. And it's called the DMP Beyond Borders. And now we have this beautiful guest. Uh, she is the international admission officer. Her name is Heather Johnson. And hey, Heather, how Hi. are you? Good, how are you? How is going? Oh, pretty great. Looking forward to Christmas. Yeah, coming enjoying up. the weather? I don't mind it. <laughs> <laughs> but I've lived here my whole life, so. Okay, so let's, let's get into the real questions, right? <laughs> uh, so... When it comes to, you know, bringing students up in the college, it's it's uh, like it's more of a, you know, it takes a mindset, it takes a plan to bring people in. So what is the things or what are the offers? Like what is the plan to attract students from other countries? 
So we do work with people abroad in different countries. So we have mm -hmm. four representatives that work for us in India, Vietnam, China, and Korea. Mm -hmm. um, so they work for the college, and they're the ones who connect with people on the ground. And so we have also agencies that work for us across the world. Mm -hmm. So the agents are the ones who connect with the students in country. And then it's their responsibility to kind of let them know about the different options in the college <coughs> and things like that. And then we connect through them, and that's how students get to know about the college. Mm -hmm. um, we also work with them so they know what Thunder Bay and what Confederation College is, because that's also a very big step. We are a small city. A lot mm -hmm. of people know about Toronto and Vancouver yeah. and things like that. So it's important for them to know what the college is and what we can offer and what's the benefit of coming to a place like Thunder Bay. Mm -hmm. So like when it, when it comes to the benefits, what are the benefits of coming to Thunder Bay? Like despite of uh, enjoying the beauty like mm -hmm. it's it's natural scenic beauty everywhere what are the other you know? i think uh, being a small community is one of our greatest benefits mm -hmm. we have students who connect very quickly to the locals so mm -hmm. i used to do airport pickups for the college in the office and i would remember standing at the escalator and seeing students brand new to the city come off with already talking to new someone places. else because they met someone on the plane right mm -hmm. And so having that connection um, and being able to go to the store and see our students everywhere, they're either at Metro or Canadian Tire or at the gas station, they're sort of everywhere. So having that ability to connect really easily with people that live here helps settle a home really fast. Um, our cost of living is also a lot lower than it would be in yeah. some length, length Toronto or Vancouver. Um, and then also just like you said, it's beautiful here. We live on the <laughs> greatest freshwater lake in the world, yeah. you know, all the natural beauty and all the things you can do in the city for sure. So uh, it's, it's an exciting job, right? To see new faces mm -hmm. and to interact with them. So what are the myths about international students that are not true, but they are out there? Um, I think <coughs> one of the things that both students and even staff at the college think you do pay a lot of money for the tuition, right? It's very mm -hmm. expensive to be here. And so a lot of times they think like, oh, we're being charged three times as much as Canadian students would be. But in actuality, Canadian students are subsidized to study here and mm -hmm. international students are unfortunately, but being charged the actual cost of the program. Okay. Um, one of the main things too is we find, you know, it was talked about earlier about the difference in the education from back where you come from versus Canadian education. And so sometimes we have students or faculty or whoever else saying, I'm struggling in the program, and it's assumed that's a language problem. The fact that everyone can speak English and studying English, I think, is amazing. Learning another language is super hard, mm -hmm. um, but often it's not a language issue in the classroom. It is just adapting to that difference of education. Yeah. Um, so you have to sort of break down. It's not just them not understanding, but it's getting them to understand the different ways of studying in the classroom. Like, so how's the, how's the whole scenario has changed? in the past years? So I've been in the international office for about seven years now. Mm -hmm. um, so when I first started, there was about 50 students on campus. Mm -hmm. um, I remember the first three, my first summer working as a student in the office. Mm -hmm. I still talk to them to this day. And now we have over 1,300. Uh -oh. So going from three to 1,300 in seven, eight years is incredible. That's, that's um, incredible. It's completely changed the entire college atmosphere and the life on campus. And it's been great to see that because we do have a lot more of the events that Vic was talking about. We have the culture days and just seeing that adapt to the college and mm -hmm. change the whole perspective of people because as much as a learning opportunity for you, it's a learning opportunity for us to have that um, experience with other students. So like, what do you think about the events that go? I love them. I love between it, whether it's the Christmas stuff or the celebrations of Holly or things like that. It's just, it's great to see, you know, we are, we are a small community, so mm -hmm. we're a bit of a bubble up in Thunder Bay. Mm -hmm. So to have those different cultures interact with us, I'm happy there's more restaurants in Thunder Bay that uh -huh. I can experience. <laughs> we have more than one Indian restaurant, which is great. Um, so the changing dynamics of the city has been incredible. So you new. must have tasted a lot of like, I, I do enjoy Indian food, for sure. <laughs> so like, do, you, do you enjoy this or the international stuff, like when it comes to food? I, I like international food. I, I mean, I am a Canadian at heart, so I mean, chicken and potatoes by all means, but I will, if I have to choose, I will go to one of the restaurants in town for sure. And what is the common problem that international students face these days? I think it's just adapting in general, understanding when you, even you're settling in Thunder Bay, right? Mm. So we have new students coming in for the January intake and it's, having them understand what's the cost of living. So do you want to, they come and think they can spend $200 a month on rent. 
that's great, mm-hmm. not going to happen. So just having them understand the expectations of what it would be yeah. like to study here, um, not just living and like how quickly would you find work and is it possible to get a manager job as soon as I finish my class, right? Well, no, you have to sort of start and work your way up to that. So just managing those expectations for sure is mm. one of the biggest issues. And what do you think about the 20 hours rule? Like, do you think it should be expanded? The part-time work? Mm-hmm. I mean, personally, I think it's good to limit it only because we've found students who focus on work. Because a lot of the times, if you're in school during the day, we find our students are working their jobs at night which doesn't leave you with a lot of energy to actually go to school the next day, right? Mm -hmm. So um, as a member of the college, I want students to focus on their education, and that comes first. And I do understand that it is very expensive for a lot of students here. Um, A lot of them are supporting their families back home, so they do have to work to both live here and support their families. Um, But you have to finish your program. And you have to pass all your classes and do all the focus on that. So when students can find that balance between the two things, that's the best case scenario. Like, you know, it, 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 uh, the field work is not easy to get for, mm-hmm. for the starting. Like, I've been trying to get my, my work, like the work I do, like in the video editing and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And right now I'm working at it. The problem that I, f- I feel is there mm-hmm. is the, the amount of earning that is there, you know. Like, like it's, it's fine. Everyone, everyone wants to work in that 20 hours one if, if, if they are getting satisfactorily paid but but yeah i agree i agree with you yeah like being a student's heart <laughs> yeah, it is it, it is it is but the priority should be education mm-hmm. like you know as, as a student my perspective to it is like there should be 30 hours reason being like i the type of schedule i had like in the first semester uh, i was mostly free and even after completing my assignments on time i was having like too much time to spare you know and I, I guess it, it, it differs yeah and I remember everyone. when I first started in the office I believe students weren't even able to work at all for the first six months they came here so it has changed over the years mm-hmm. and we may see another change in the future coming <clears> too. so like do you, do you do you appreciate the system or like do you want it to like you know if, if I talk about um, like should we should we change it or like do you want the students to just focus on the you know, study part. Like it, it, it should be priority for no Yeah, I mean, doubt. I don't think it's possible to say students can never work because that's not possible for any student, international or domestic, mm-hmm. to be able to go to school, for to live, for to go to the classroom without having a part-time job. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's fair for me to say, like, oh, no, only focus on school <laughs> because it's just not possible. It's not. Um, but I ha- I've seen students struggle with failing a class because or missing an exam because they had to work a shift. And unfortunately, that has really dire consequences in the future, where if you fail one class, then suddenly you have to extend for a semester or another year, and that's another X amount of dollars. So mm-hmm. sure, you're making money now, but then you have to spend more money in the future yeah. just making up for that one course. Yeah. So of course, like I said, the balance is really necessary. The balance is necessary, yeah. And which is your favorite department to deal with? <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, Suki. <laughs> we're as the international <coughs> office. We are really excited to see the fact that there's a first international president. Um, it's made the relationship between our departments really great, mm-hmm. um, and it's great for our students to have another office in the college to go to because often we are the only ones that students come to with issues, mm-hmm. um, and so it's nice to have them have another place to go to and discuss and have a support behind them like Suki does. And which is your favorite weather? I like the fall. Mm -hmm. I can't handle hot weather very well. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, even though my birthday's in July, so I must like it. But I don't mind the winter. I don't mind December. Once we get into February and March, when it stays cold for a long time, I'm a big fan of that. But so, yeah, I like the fall. I like cool winds, but still warm. Um, That's my favorite time. The balance is necessary. (laughs) Uh, I'm all about the balance. (laughs) And, like, uh, do, do students complain about it now, too, about the winters? Yeah, yeah. Um, but and that's why we do a lot of things on our Facebook page and in our office about how to dress for the weather, right? Mm. Like, it is possible to survive here. We've yep. been doing it for years. So it's just preparing the students on how to, if you are having to wait for the bus for five, ten minutes, how to kind of prepare yourself for that. And there's a lot of fun activities to do in yeah. the snow. I, skiing, snowboarding. Like, I, I've been here for now four or five months. And I don't really have the complaints of snow. Mm-hmm. Like it, 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 it actually <laughs> gets it actually gets uh, irritating when when you when the bus is not here. Mm-hmm. But other than that, 
like it is also a beautiful weather to enjoy you know i think you're a, you're the best case where you start you came here in september and then you mm. ease into winter i yeah. feel for the students that are coming right now and they're going to be landing in very <laughs> shocking weather in the next couple of weeks so like when you compare our international student and uh, domestic student relation like is it is it better now I think so and that just comes from over time with like I said going from three students to 1300 um, it's great when there is a class that has a good mixture of Canadian and international because it benefits both sides mm -hmm. uh, it gives the, the Canadian students access to different cultures and understanding working relationships because once you're done school and in the workforce you never know who you're going to be working with so it's good for both sides to have that relationship already sort of there and started um mm -hmm. and so I, I i have to say it has to be better now than it's ever been just because of that like coming from an artistic you know department i, I actually appreciate it mm -hmm. because like there are ideas and like that we can't you know come up with or someone else can come up with and they just pop up it and there is a final output the output is always amazing because it's not only of one country's idea mm -hmm. it's an international idea so that's the best part of it and overall how you describe the like the whole system of you know getting the admission stuff and all like is it like the process or mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. yeah so uh, like i said it starts off with the student you know <coughs> you know best right you apply yeah. to the college um, and we have an online application system so we do have a recruiter in our office and she's the one who works with the reps abroad mm -hmm. um so the applications come through me and my coworker, um who's the other admissions officer assess everything um and that's honestly one of the hardest parts because Education is different from every single country, sometimes different schools, even within that same country. So having to understand the different education systems in 30, mm -hmm. 40, 50 different mm -hmm. countries. Um, but we manage. And then so you get offered the admission. Um, there is a deposit deadline that you have to pay the first tuition by. And then it's the visa processing from there. And that's probably the hardest part um, because immigration varies from, from country to country and mm -hmm. success rates are different from country to country. So we're all yeah. sort of crossing our fingers and hoping for the best for the students abroad. And which department is the successful one in terms of, I should say, placements? In, ter in terms, in terms of, of like placements? Like jobs, opportunities, and all? Um, it really depends. I mean, I actually, yeah, I don't know myself the outcome. Um, I do know something like aircraft maintenance has a really high need for those types of jobs in the city. Mm -hmm. um, but there are certain programs like business HR where most companies in the city have an HR comp or HR section or um, department in their overall company. So it sort of depends. I think there's jobs in every sector. Um, I myself was a student at the college. I took travel and tourism, and now mm -hmm. I work for the international office. So it's all about what you're passionate about and what you want to work in, and you can kind of find a job where like you what can. I have, I have observed is the medical department is blooming. Mm -hmm. Like it's really like that is the department that I see like my roommates like I, we are four roommates right and two of them they work in the DSW department and they are like I hear more of that and also our department is there mm -hmm. and other than that which department the business department is also there and the cooking and all that yeah so it's it's a great like mm -hmm. my personal view till now I'm enjoying college I am enjoying <laughs> literally here. every day and yeah thank you for coming here and for your valuable time i know you are also a busy woman thank you so much of course yeah and it was a pleasure having you here thank you. and so thank you guys it was a great session and we are wrapping up with our dmp beyond borders and it was the first time i hope we did good stay tuned thank you mm -hmm.